and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. I'm Steve Leahy. This Tech Tuesday is a continuation of the Gradation Tech Tuesday that we had just done. I got a great comment from Jeff Simon about what happens with certain colors. His color was specifically red. And that got me thinking about doing another Tech Tuesday to kind of show the way that the airbrush can also blend colors together instead of just values like we did in the graduation one. This will show how effective the airbrush is at blending two colors together or three colors or eight colors or whatever you have. So the example that I wanted to kind of put out there was uh, the painting Car Jockey. So that is a bright red Ford Thunderbird and that has some really nice gradations in the in the finish between red and its lighter colors. So what we'll do is we'll kind of look at that, how I kind of did that, and why the airbrush works so well. Hang on, we'll get right into it, and um, thanks for coming by. Be right back. So for this first exercise to kind of show the, the gradation between the red, I'm going to use two colors. I'm going to use Createx Wicked Opaque White and then Createx Wicked Opaque Pyrrole Red, actually. That's not the right one. So we're going to use Wicked Red. <laughs> this will work too. Uh, the, the color I was going to grab was uh, this Wicked, uh, the Opaque Pyro Red. And actually, why don't we use that one? The, the two colors are similar. The, uh, the regular red has a little bit more, uh, I don't know, it's a little bit darker in value. Uh, but I figured I'd show you with all opaque colors because what's neat about this and the way that the airbrush works is you can take opaque colors and still make them transparent. So I'll show you how to do that. The other thing we're going to use as well are the Createx 4011 reducer, which is the reducer for this paint. And the other thing we're going to use too is the UVLS gloss, which is a uh, gloss clear, uh, but I use it as kind of a, a, a mixing medium to kind of thin out, not thin out the paint, but make it a little bit more transparent. So those are the ones. What I do with these two is I mix them together uh, before I start working and that gives me kind of a, a um, I call it a spiked reducer essentially I put a little bit of this into this and that's that's kind of what I work with and if you're keeping track of the ratios I use one part of this to ten parts of this so just in case I grab the bottle and it isn't clear what that is that's what it is all right so let's get to it so grab an airbrush and what I want to do so I'm going to be doing a, a gradation between um, the red and the, and the lighter color, which is going to be pink. So it's going to have a lot of the same characteristics of the gradation uh, that we just did in the, in the last video. Uh, so I'll show you that, but also show you how I kind of blend them together. So what I'm thinking about it is, um, again, I could do this with the red by itself and then just really fade it out. And let me show you that. Put a little bit of red in here and we'll get going. So just a little bit of red, maybe one drop. With this brush, uh, you can get a lot of miles out of one drop. And then, here's that uh, reducer already mixed up. That's the reducer we were just talking about with the clear. I'm going to put some of that in there to help just spread this paint out a little bit. It allows that opaque color to have some space between the actual little droplets of paint. And that gives the illusion of transparency. Uh, it isn't this isn't a transparent paint and if you even with it reduced like this if I build this up enough I can regain that opacity uh, But again, I want to kind of show you this because this is kind of the worst case scenario If you do this gradation that I'm about to do with a transparent paint, it's much easier But this shows you again the kind of the worst case scenario. All right, so that is straight up red. So with that gradation I can do the same thing I did before with last week's or the gradation episode, where I can start the gradation with a, and I'm going to go this way, so it's dark to light, left to right. So I'm going to start off with the lightest red across the whole area that I want to do that fade, like that. And then I'm going to start on this end, and just like in the other video, I'm only going to go about three quarters of the way down with this next pass. And then as I get to the end, I just kind of trail it off a little bit. And the same thing. I'll go again, but this time I'll only go about halfway through. And then the final time, I'm just going to really kind of get that deeper red color at the, at the back side of this. 
and that's it. That'll give me a really smooth fade all the way across. Now the other way to do it, this is a little bit harder to control, is if I start dark and then as I'm moving across, I just lighten up the lines essentially until that fades away. But what happens with this, and you can almost see it, if you're not careful, you get these streaks in it as you're kind of moving across. So this method here, by kind of building up the colors gradually, will give you that really nice uh, transition. So the other way to do this um, is to introduce an actual pink color. Like I used the red to create this transparent pink color. You could do the same thing by mixing up a pink first, like a specific pink, white and red, and then spraying that whole thing and then moving into the reds too. So we're going to kind of get into that, but we'll get into that with a different color. So I think it'll, it'll more illustrate the, uh, the, the, the way that works. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to gradate this from a red to a yellow. So we'll get some nice oranges in between. So let's switch things around and uh, I'll show you how that works. So let's look at the yellow to red. So I have another airbrush here that I'll use for this. So that way I can keep the red in the other brush ready to go. So for the yellow, same thing. I'm going to use an opaque yellow. This is opaque Hansa yellow uh, from Createx. Same thing here. I'm going to put one drop of paint in here. And a neat trick for mixing, if you mix in the cup, um, I put the drop on the side, on the kind of wall of the airbrush. I didn't put it in the bottom. So that way what I can do is I can go and grab the reducer there we go. So I can grab the reducer and I can put that in the bottom of the airbrush. So by doing that, it helps to really mix up the paint. I don't have that heavy pigment stuck at the bottom. I can really kind of mix it all in. And like I said, I don't get that big lump of, of heavy, heavy paint at the bottom. Now you should be mixing this up well enough that you don't have that anyway. But with the bottom of the airbrush, it's got little kind of corners in there in the paint reservoir. And um, the heavier paint, you know, sometimes if you miss a little bit of mixing and there's a little bit of heavy paint stuck in there, it'll run through the brush and then just clog it. So there's your second bonus tip for today. All right, so there is a the yellow and that's really thin. So for this, I'm going to do the same thing. I want to, I want to go from the red to the yellow. And um, what I normally do, you can do it either way, but normally I'll always pick the lighter color to start with and then, and then move the the darker color on top of that. Uh, it just, for me, it works, it works, it works a little bit nicer. It's a little bit smoother. So for this, I'm going to do exactly the same thing I just did with the red, except I'm going to go from right to left with this. So I'm going to start with the yellow and I'm going to make a light pass and just start moving that light pass across to make a really light yellow kind of spot. So now that I've got that done, I couldn't have picked more horrible paper too. This is like the worst copy paper, so it's all wrinkling, but hopefully you get the idea. Uh, the next pass, same thing as what we do with the red. I'm going to go about three quarters of the way through that and then just fade it off. Let that dry. Next pass is halfway through. And I know this is difficult to see with the yellow because it's so light, but you get, hopefully you get the idea. And then last pass is to just get that strong yellow just in the last spot. For the next example, I will grab better paper. <laughs> there we go. Let that stop wrinkling. There we go. Okay. And then for the red fade, it's exactly the same thing as we just did on the first well, on the other one. I'll start here and do exactly the same thing I, I, I did on, on the, um, the red example that I just did. And I'll move that red so the lightest layer is going to be the, the layer that actually fades into the yellow. So we'll start over here, get the airbrush going, and then I'm just going to do this light red fade over the whole thing and just blend it into the yellow. And again, I'm going really, really light here. And I, pat, I went about, um, I'd say about halfway into the yellow before I stopped. So there's the first pass. Okay. Second pass, just like we did, I'll go three quarters of the way through this one. So I'm going to go about three quarters of the way through. Like that. And then I'll go halfway. And then the final one is to deepen this red up on the side. 
and that gives me this really soft transition between the two. Now, what's going to happen here is um, the the paint, the trans or the opaque paint will um, kind of create this darker, almost darker value in the middle. So it's not super bright orange. Um, the way you would counter that if you wanted more of a rainbow type look as it passes through, like red to a, a specific orange to a yellow. I would just insert an orange pass in the middle with orange paint, especially if I'm working with um, opaque paints because they do, they tend to cover more than blend. And that's kind of what's going on here. That's why I get this kind of muddy orange instead of a real bright orange. The method would be exactly the same. So if I was starting with the orange and I wanted that kind of to be the, the middle color, that would be the first one I'd put in and I'd spread it out both ways. And then I'd work with the yellow into that and the red into that. And that would give me a, a just a, you know, a perfect transition. So the next example we're going to do is going from uh, these, these colors are next to each other or near each other on the color wheel. So they play really nicely together. When you mix the two together, you get this nice secondary orange. So the next example we're going to do is we're going to move into colors that are opposite uh, the, on the color wheel and show you kind of how that how blend happens with that. All right, let me switch things up. I will get a better piece of paper and uh, we'll get to it. Okay, for this next one though, I wanted to kind of jump back real quick and kind of show the difference between, this is working completely transparently. I go from a, an opaque red and then I faded it away and the, the pink here you're seeing is because the opaque paint isn't thick enough to cover the white. So you're getting a blending of the white of the paper and the red to get this pink. What I want to do is show you the difference between this and also being intentional with that pink color. So I'm going to do this fade the same way as I just did the yellow, but instead of using yellow, I'm going to use a pink color. So I've mixed this up. This is opaque white and the same pyrrole red. So this is now essentially an opaque pink, but I'll kind of show you the difference of how this looks as opposed to working transparently. There is, no, there is no correct way to do this, meaning um, some people love working transparently, like watercolor, and uh, it has a certain look to it, and other people like working more opaque, more like, um, you know, like a thick oil paint. Uh, the, the both are correct. It's just a completely different kind of mindset when you're working with the airbrush, because you can do both, which is really nice. You can do both with oils and, well, watercolor you really can't unless you introduce uh, like a gouache. But uh, because watercolors are inherently uh, transparent the way they are. So I'm going to build up this pink across the board. But as far as the, the, the fade goes, I'm not worried about fading it to the, to the, the red's going to be over here and move into it. I'm not worried about fading the pink into the red. I'm just doing kind of like a pink field. It is kind of soft on this edge, but it's not... You know, you just don't want a super hard edge if you're trying to blend the two together. But I'm not doing the same thing as I did before, where I painted the whole thing pink and then did, you know, three quarters, half, and then the end of it. I'm just kind of painting in the whole thing to give myself a base. Essentially, this is like the underpainting. But that is at opacity now. That is the same pink that's in this airbrush. Okay. And then from there, I work the same way with the red. So the red's going to, the, the gradation from here is going to be exactly like we just did. So let this dry a little bit. I did switch out the paper to a heavier paper, but even with that, this is why I don't like working on paper. Um, the moisture in the air, in the paint will cause the the the, uh, the paper to kind of wrinkle up. So it'll straighten out, but it's just kind of a a drag. All right, same thing. So now, same deal. So I'm going to start the red fade from over here, but I'm not you know, just like before. I'm just going to do a really light layer of that red. And then I'm just going to trail it off when I get about, you know, I don't know, three quarters of the way into the, into the pink. So there's the first pass. The second pass, again, just like before, I'm going to go three quarters of the way into that red that I just did. So about halfway through this whole thing. Like that. Next pass is going to be a little bit less than that. And then the final pass, I'm not going to go to opacity because this paint is pretty thin. It would take a bunch of passes, but just enough to give you the idea. And now you have this transition between the red and the pink. So at this point, I mean, I can make adjustments to it. Like if I want that red to be a little bit more predominant through the whole thing, I can go back really lightly over this, you know, kind of the whole, this whole area in the middle and just add a little bit more red. 
it's not going to change the, the fade that I did, which is really nice. So now I can make minor adjustments on it. It's a little bit more difficult to add more pink to this, um, but you can do it. What I would do in that instance is I would go back, well, I'll show you. Say I wanted to push the pink more, the gradation of the pink more into the red. So I jump back to the pink. Say I wanted to push it like, you know, to here. So what I'd do is I'd take the pink and do exactly the same thing, just really light layer and I'd move into the red. So I got it to the point where I wanted it. And then here's the trick. Since the darker colors cover better than the lighter colors, sometimes they'll, they'll produce this weird shift. What I'll do is I'll go back to the red now and just really lightly go over that transition so that the red is the last one on top and that pushes the pink over but still looks like I did it originally the way I started it. So there's a difference between the two. I'll try to I'll try fold this so you can actually see them right next to one another. So there's a difference when you do this. And you can see obviously this one isn't as long as this one but you get the idea. The red will start showing all the tones of red as you kind of make it more transparent. The pyro red has this neat orange cast to it when it gets really transparent, and that's what's going on there. But if you wanted a transition like in, in Car Jockey from the red to like the, the specific target color of this pink, I would need to mix up that color to get that to happen. I couldn't, I could rely on doing it this way, but again, if I do this, the painting is going to look very, very much like a watercolor. Again, which is great if that's what you're shooting for, but if you're looking for something, you know, specific, you have to be specific with it. So that kind of shows you the two differences. Okay, colors that fall on the opposite side of the color wheel are a lot of fun uh, because they don't want to mix really well. Um, if you've done this with, with a paintbrush, you get this weird muddy color. Um, the airbrush, because again, <clears throat> it's putting those little droplets of paint on there. They're individual droplets of color. They're not necessarily mixing like you'd mix them in a, in a cup before you sprayed them. So you get this really vibrant kind of, kind of look. So what I'll do is I will take the red again and start the fade just like I did it before. This time I am going to do it like the yellow, so I'll, I'll do a, a gradation from the left to the right with the red. So I'll start with my lightest red color and run that over the whole area. Okay, second pass, same deal. I'm going to go about three quarters of the way into that gradation that I just did. Make sure that's nice and even. The next pass is going to be halfway through this. And the last pass is going to be just really at the end, just to kind of make that red pop a little bit. So there's my gradation. Now for the opposite on the color wheel from red is green. So I have Wicked Opaque Thalo Green for this. So it's the same kind of thing. Now what I really want to be careful of is that first initial pass into the red. Um, because that in this area right in here, it's going to turn muddy. It's just what complementary colors do. But I want to really be in control of it. So I'm going to start this pass off and I get to see what I'm doing over here where it's just green. So once I get the, the you know, a nice even light value, I can start moving that across. Because I've given my fingers the muscle memory. As I do this over here, I know what's coming out here as I pass in because as soon as I move into the red it becomes much more difficult to see what I'm applying so again get it going over here and then just kind of move it across and what's great again with complementary colors it creates this beautiful gray color in the middle what's really nice is again with the airbrush you almost have like a green droplet of paint next to a microscopic red droplet so they're not necessarily mixing together they're just appearing next to each, each other which is gives you this really really nice gray color all right so once i'm happy with that transition between the two which i think i am i'm going to move on to the the rest of the, the gradation so I'll, again i'll start here move about halfway or three quarters of the way across that green field I want to be careful not to add any additional green in the middle because it'll make more of a hard step between the two. And then the next one is going to be about halfway through the green field. 
and then final one is just the end of the green. And then again, just like the red, what I can do is I can make a minor adjustment in the end, just kind of adding a little bit of green as I go, just to kind of make sure that transition is, is good. Uh, but there you go. So it, like, again, it creates this really neat, neat gray color that that's kind of appears in the middle. It's not like a real muddy, dirty color. Uh, and that's, again, that's what the airbrush does so, so well. Um, you can also use this, if I keep this going, if I use this green on the red as a shading color, it creates, again, it creates this really neat gray color until I get it to the point, again, I'm dealing with opaque colors. I can get this to the point where the green will start to take over and you'll see that green. But if I keep that really light and I'm using it just as a shading color on the, on the heavier green, you get this really nice shadow color. You would never think, you know, you would automatically think something red needs to have a, like a dark maroon shading color. But, uh, but it really works well. So this is where the airbrush excels. It's, you can have a lot of fun with this blending of colors. It's one of, the, one of the real strong points of the airbrush. All right, so that is your crash course on blending colors. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments right below, and I will uh, do my best to get back to all of them. If you have any ideas for Tech Tuesday, you can drop those in the comments too as well. Uh, I love it. Uh, and that's that's what we got. So hopefully you enjoyed that and got a little bit out of it. And um, if, if you did, I hope you click that like and subscribe and uh, turn on the bell notification too. Uh, and that would help me out a lot and hopefully, uh, you know, keep us in touch. So for Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, thank you very much. And I will catch you guys on the next one.